extraordinary. Hello everyone. Um, this is a... I'm not sure what what plans I would have to do with this video but um, I just got a new palette and uh, previously... Hang on. I just got a new palette and this is actually an airtight palette from Mijello which is pretty famous for uh, people who use this for gouache. They're pretty known for keeping your paints wet and fresh so this is something that a lot of gouache painters would love their paints to be. Now I have two palettes prior to this. This is the first one I used for my gouache. This is also by Mijello, but I think I made a mistake uh, purchasing this. So I got this from Jackson's Art and it is um, 20 or 30. I would say definitely more than more than what you have here. This is an 18 well palette. I think I think this would have more wells, but it doesn't really matter after years of painting. I feel like the lesser colors you have, the better you can control your color. <laughs> if you know what I mean. And this is the one that I used first for for my gouache. And the one thing I don't like about this is I don't really like this transparent palette. Um, I didn't really make good use of this. Um, I think for now I've been using this for acrylics, for mixing. And besides that, the, the cover was not really airtight. It's like a typical cover where you can use for your watercolors. In and yeah, that's it. And the reason why you see it's very clean is because I use the Hobian uh, tube. Where is it? The Hobian, 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 Hobian palette palette cleaner. And this is really great stuff. Like it literally cleans off all the stains that that previously made by the uh, acrylics and also by this palette right here. It's pretty good stuff, but um, I've been told that you can actually use hot water instead. So I'm probably going to use that instead of using this because this thing is pretty small and I don't think it can actually last in the long run. So yeah, my review for this palette is I think this is great for watercolors but not for gouache. This palette right here, it's slightly smaller and I think it's much more handier and I would actually decorate this with stickers. After I was disappointed with this palette, I went for another one which is not practical now that I know. I used to think this is actually much more practical because I like to mix it uh, on a plate. But this is the drawback of having an open palette. It dries up and it became like pebbles and um, it actually destroyed some of my synthetic brushes. This is one of the damages. Like it actually frays your brushes. This is the, the brush that I use a lot of time. It kind of annoys me a bit so I don't reuse really this anymore. This is the size 1 brush. I really do like this brush. I think this brush is also very nice too. Da Vinci Cosmo Top Spin. It's a um, synthetic brush. Come on, focus. Here you go. I usually use synthetic brush for my gouache pieces. I kind of like because it's quite stiff. It's not really um, flexible. I tried using Sable. Uh, it's not really my favorite. I think that would go well with watercolor. So anyway, this is my palette that I used for one year. And this one for throughout the whole time. And I even dated the time when I first used it. So I think it's been almost two years, I think. 
yeah, almost two years and it's been a good journey and I feel like I need to move on to this palette right here. I'm not sure if I would like to use this but um, it stays on very tight which is something I like because when I have to carry along, I don't have to, you know, it won't actually fly out very easily. It's not something overwhelmingly big so I can put it at the side when I paint right here. On the next cut, I'm going to refill some colors that I usually use and yep. Alright, so I am here selecting some colors that I usually use. Now there's actually no right way or a bad way to choose colors. I think it all comes to your preference when you choose colors in your paintings so my choices in this colors may not be necessary necessarily apply to yours but um, probably you will find this video much more uh, informative in terms of um, knowing the colors that you've been using or probably you have not tried gouache before and you would want to know how to actually pick colors for your palette so um, this is the color stash that I have these ones are like the backups that I get because I can get panic attacks if I run out of them and during this quarantine time you may not expect delivery to come that quick so that's why I I bought it in advance just so you know like this color right here um, the white titanium white or permanent white is the most vital colors that you will always need in your paint in your paintings now I'm gonna check on colors that I really need hmm. I think I'm gonna use this one this is um, Royal Talents gouache. I think I have the white one. Where is it? Another white one. This is horrible. Ah, uh, I don't know if I keep it here. It just upsets me whenever I see this in my stash. I really like um, some colors from Hobian. The peacock blue. This is very beautiful, uh, it's pretty vibrant and I really like to mix this with magenta for a very nice shallow color. Okay, I'm gonna pick up all my gouache paints first. So the three main colors I like to use is this one, cobalt, cobalt, cobalt turquoise light. Come on, come on, come on, come on now, come on. All right, so this one is sort of an alternative to Hobbian's infamous cobalt turquoise light, I think. It's actually one of the tubes that is so expensive. And you can actually check on Jackson's Art website that they usually sold out very fast and this is the color that oops this is the color that I always used for most of my paintings and it's almost reaching towards the end of its life where is it I already have the uh, backup for this so it's all good here we go this is the backup <laughs> all right so black is very not not a color that I usually use so I'm just gonna put right here okay so right off the bat this blue and I'm thinking not to use Oprah pink so much um, Oprah pink is actually a very fugitive color and it's not it's not lasting if you can see the rating of this permanence I'm sorry, there's someone texting me If you see this permanence grade It's C, means it's very 
fugitive in a sense that when it is exposed to light it will fade over time now this one here you can see it's double a it means that it is very it has a very good light fastness means that it can actually last over time so whenever you choose paints especially when you do commissions you have to have a certain um, knowledge on how to see the paint mixes opera pinks usually mixes with fluorescent which which will actually get faded over time but my paintings um i usually use kamara varnish to varnish my paintings whenever i finish them to actually give a certain layers of varnishing to help not fade in time but i probably gonna use it this time because i'm not doing any commissions um i'm gonna use this probably my sketching my sketches and i'm going to get quinacridone magenta so to replace this color i've ordered uh, acryl gouache i think it's this one i've ordered these two colors right here so i'm gonna use this instead of using this color so this two um they have a permanence level by three out of four bars which is pretty good pretty impressive but i cannot um, squirt these on this palette because it will actually turn plastic so i'm going to use this manually and by the way this is like another stash of my acrylic gouache i've been trying to transition into acrylic gouache for for quite some time now so i think this is a great time for me to explore that so i'm gonna use these two colors linen green is my favorite color for highlights especially ultramarine it's like the no-brainer it's like every painter's favorite color ultramarine and burnt sienna it's my favorite combination color you can actually try this at home you can actually use these two colors to actually create a nice still life practice orange lake deep mm, there you go you can take note of the permanence level a a for apple and brilliant violet and magenta it has a permanence level of c which is something that i should really look into probably going to use that hobby and gouache acrylic gouache as a replacement raw sienna cadmium yellow this one is expensive compared to other tubes one color that i don't like i wouldn't recommend you guys to buy is this one i feel like it's better if you spend your money on hobbyin's peacock blue this intense blue seems seems boring for me i just feel like there's no variation of blue tones in it i have these two tubes here this is permanent green middle and this is permanent green deep um back in the days i wasn't really good in choosing greens green is a very uh, it's a very hard color to work with like if you add more green it just looks very dirty if you add less green it just looks very desaturated if you know what i mean like usually for greens i always go for ultramarine and oxide of chromium this is a very great color for uh, painting leaves this is intense like i wasn't really sure how to work with this but after a few months of painting ever since i bought this i feel i'm more towards into permanent green middle so i'm gonna use this too and uh, it's another color that i don't really recommend is permanent red it's a little bit like rose matter if you use watercolors it has it has rosy tones it's quite similar to magenta if you can use it i don't really use this color as much i use spectrum red which is a very full body red and this is actually pretty good to mix with other colors it's mixable with blue to create violet this color 
does not. So I'm gonna use this one. Hmm. Flesh tint. I feel like this is a very great color to start with if you are a beginner. Um, I like this color because I don't really have to mix. So this one has four pigment picks. Um, four pigment mixes. Rather than using so much colors from other tubes, I would rather save my time and get one tube instead. So it's actually much more time consuming and it's the a very convenient color and I usually use this for flowers or skin tones so I'm not going to use this yet because I don't really use this color as much Perusian blue is a must I feel like this color is very versatile you can add spectrum red with Persian blue to become closer to black I would not recommend everyone to actually use ivory black straight away because it's just very bland very boring to act so some painters they don't really use black i think they don't use black as much because it's just not so interesting enough when you look into the painting all right so this one oh zinc white not my favorite Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. This tool will become very handy if you're painting with gouache. All right, so I'm gonna start. Okay. I mean, for myself, I don't really follow the rule of following the. Um, the rule of arranging colors, I just see the colors where I usually use and where I usually mix, if you know what I mean. I think I, I think it's okay to learn along the process. I realized that I left out yellow ochre. It's actually one of the colors that actually use this color for painting breads. Also, I decided to add in the um, permanent green deep because I wasn't sure if I really like this color yet, but I feel like I will squirt a little bit of in here. I leave another blank here for a another gouache, another crinacridone magenta from Windsor Newton, which I have not get my hands on, but probably in the future after the quarantine is done. Yeah, I'm just gonna squeeze it right now. So, I think I'm quite done right here. Okay. So the tip that I get from 
painters that use this pal this palette is that you have to spray it generously before you keep it given that it would dry over time but for a painter that paints every day it won't be a problem so I'm gonna spray it generously I'm going to cover it and let's hope it's pretty good all right now it has been sealed i feel like it lacks of something I actually painted this and I made them into stickers I usually sell them in um, art markets for like about three dollars for I think about three dollars for for one sticker three ringgit <laughs> so um, I have not put this up on my shop yet because I wasn't sure if people would want it but if you really want it um, Feel free to let me know. I'm probably gonna list them up in on my Etsy shop or probably in my personal shop. So these stickers, they are um, they are vinyl. They're pretty waterproof. They're very they're pretty thick compared to typical stickers. And um, similar to these ones here, these are waterproof. I think I'm gonna end this as it is. I wanna leave some space for other stickers. So yeah, I'm gonna check back the next day if the paints turn out wet and fresh. All right, this is the the next day, and here you see all my messy items on my table. This is like my studio slash guest bed, guest room. All right, so I am probably going to find a day to schedule for a cleanup but not today because I have other filming to do and another editing to do but all right let's get onto the subject right here so this is the um, the palette that I previously filled on yesterday so today we're gonna check whether the paints retain moisture all right so here is how it looks um, so far it's pretty good it's it feels like this palette is pretty promising in retaining moisture. I think um, I would need to create the habit on spritzing more water every day. While I was doing this um, paint squeezing thing, I feel like I need to do more research on some paints that I need to do to replace this and some of the greens right here. I wasn't really sure what sort of green that I really need for my palette so I just ordered two tubes from Windsor Newton it is Viridian and Quinacridon Magenta so that's how it is I feel like this palette has more promising um, features than the other palette that I have owned um, I'm going to give this for another month or two to actually let you know all right, so today is 26th of May and while, as I was painting with my new palette right here and I just remembered that I should give an update I was editing my palette video and that was filmed during April which is quite a month plus ago so um, I was currently painting and uh, 
it's actually quite a different setting than before I actually well just uh just give an update I actually moved my workspace right here so they can get more sunlight on the side well anyway I mentioned about getting quinacridone magenta and viridian and I actually did the empty spot that I, I actually pointed out a bit previously it was currently filled with quinacridone magenta I love using this yeah so far so good the paints turn out moist some paints turn out more solid than ever especially for this one I think it is this yellow ochre and uh, it currently gets dried up I mean not something I can help with because currently in Malaysia we've been getting hot weather situation right here like we always get 34 35 degrees celsius and it's really really hot so I need to on the AC which get this paints dried up so when I'm not painting I usually close them up so that I won't get dust or, or any fur for my dog to get in here and uh, will I recommend you guys to use this? you should I mean it's not really that expensive uh, as far as I checked on Amazon or in uh, stores in Malaysia if you are interested to find this in Malaysia I will, I will put down a link below and perhaps a link from Jackson's Art alright guys I am slowly getting up to film again because I'm currently don't have much work going on um, and yeah I'm probably gonna use this time to film probably to share my thoughts and experience and hopefully you guys can learn a thing or two and yeah so I'll see you guys in the next video bye bye